And so this is the Parrot Art Kit. I'm going to show you how to do this. Um, this is what it looks like finished. So when it's all done, it's got a lot of texture on it. It's got a little marble here. Um, it's got the Made with Love uh, little emblem on there that you glue on. And it's got some metallics. It's just, a, it's a really great kit. So um, let me show you. We're going to go ahead and open this. Alright, so this is everything that's in the kit. Uh, what you want to do is go ahead and make sure that all of your paints are sitting up. So make sure they're not upside down. What that does is it, it lets all the paint fall down so that it doesn't uh, spill when you open those up. So what you're going to add to your kit is you're going to go get a cup of water, uh, a pair of scissors, um, something to paint on like either a paper plate or you could even use a piece of foil or a dish anything any kind of flat surface will work um, you want to cover your area because this is uh, latex or it's like a, you know an acrylic paint and uh, you want to be sure that um, if you get it on your clothes you wash it out right away so um, if you have an allergy to lay latex just don't get it you know on your skin or anything like that so um, okay, we are ready to start. Um, so let's let's uh, let me show you how to do this. Okay, so once you have your apron on, your clothes are covered, and you're all ready to paint, uh, make sure that you read your instructions. One of the things this says on here is not to handle the board uh, a lot on the edges because it could sear, you know, it could splinter. So you want to be careful with that. So you're going to use. Um, your photo reference to tell you know so you can see all the lines that you're supposed to be doing so the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn this board upside down it's easier to work when you're pulling uh, this direction so um, we're going to take the first bag of plaster and we're going to go ahead what you do is you squeeze the plaster back so here's the corner and I'm going to cut with my scissors. Just make a nice cut in that. And let's see, I think I'll start with this edge. And I'm going to put some plaster in there first. I'm going to get my knife and just kind of fill it in. First you're filling it in, then later I will show you how to make the little um, the texture in it. See, so I can kind of use a little bit more there. So you're just kind of spreading it around like peanut butter. Try not to cover your lines. If you do get over some of your lines, you can just kind of pull it off with your finger or with your paper towel. So once you have it on there, what you're going to do is you're going to just take your knife and pull like this just to make to make it look like feathers. Okay. All right. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a line between the two areas. So, I don't want you to cover cover your line. We want to keep that separation there. So I'm going to spread this one a little bit. I think I'm going to use my finger to kind of spread it around. I think that makes it a little bit easier. This is just uh, plaster, so it's not ever been a problem. Anybody that's ever, you know, had it on their finger. So um, it's fairly non-toxic. So we'll go ahead and spread that gives you just a little more control. You could use your paintbrush for this. Um, a lot of times I do use the paintbrush. If you don't want to put your finger in it, that would work. Okay. All right, so get my paper towel just to wipe off my finger. 
All right, so now you take your, um, your knife and you're pulling. So you're looking at your picture and you can tell how to pull. What you're, you're pulling towards, um, towards the top of the board to make your feathers. I don't want you to worry too much about the separating lines because what you can do is you can go back in with your stick end of your brush and you can kind of make that line show up a little better in case it got covered up. Okay. Alright, so on this part what you want to do is we're going to start pulling the feathers towards, towards the, the head now. So we're switching directions a little bit. Now these feathers we're making long uh, at the end and then we're going to start making them shorter. So let me show you. So let's wipe, wipe the knife off and then as we start coming up here we're going to start making shorter strokes. And then when we come up here to the head, they're really small. N another way to do feathers, um, once you get them on there a little bit, you could use your finger and pull them if you wanted to, to make them, especially up here, these little ones are pretty easy to do with your finger if you don't mind using your finger. Either way, it works great. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the plaster, and then uh, we're going to go to the next step. All right, so now we're on step number three, and it says to base coat the sky with light aqua. So you're going to take your brush and put it in the water just to release uh, the sizing, wipe the water back out, and then going to open your light aqua. You just open it like this, set it aside, and then we're going to just go ahead and paint the sky area. What you can do is you can follow your, um, your picture to see where the aqua goes. So um, when you're doing this, it's okay to leave a little bit of the uh, wood show through. Um, I think it makes it look kind of cool. You can even add a little water as you go. You can even add a little bit of water as you go. And uh, so, base, just basically base coating the whole sky with light aqua. to touch your water while you're doing the sky to make sure that you have enough paint. See, you just have this one uh, little tub of paint, of the light, light aqua, and this board can really absorb a lot of color. So 
if you touch your brush in the water sometimes it makes it go on a little bit thinner and that way you'll be sure not to run out of that color uh, everybody paints differently and some people might uh, put too heavy of a coat of color on the board and it would cause you to run out of paint before you're finished so uh, so every maybe every three strokes go ahead and dip in your water and that way it'll thin your color out a little bit and that'll make sure you have enough paint to cover the whole background Okay, so I would finished the aqua background and notice I have a little bit of aqua left over and that's because I added water to my brush as I went along and so when you're finished with your brush you always put it in the water <clears throat> make sure that <clears throat> it doesn't dry out that way so uh, the, the paint dries really fast so <clears throat> alright so the next step on the directions is number five it says to base coat the beak black so uh, this time we're not going to use any water on our brush let's open the black make sure that it's mixed if it needs to be mixed in this case it doesn't there's no no liquid on the top so um, I'm going to follow my picture and just do the beak uh, so it's this this spot here and then right Okay, so once the black is done, I'm going to go to the brown. So I'll close my black and open my brown. And I'm going to, <clears throat> I'm on step number six. And it says base coat the branch and the centers of the flowers brown. So you can touch your water once in a while to help the paint flow a little better. We're going to paint the branch and the centers of the flowers. All right, I went ahead and got some clean water. It's kind of nice to have that while I'm getting ready to do white and uh, it's hard to do white if your water's too dark. So I'm on step number, let's see, number seven. And so I'm going to open the white. And on that step, it says uh, to base coat the eye, the bink, and the flowers white. So be sure that when you do the flowers not to get into the brown. So, and also try not to cover over your black line okay so I'm on step eight and I'm gonna open the hunter green and I'm gonna shade my um, my leaves so I'm gonna touch my hunter green and then my water and that's going to make it nice and thin uh, so I'm only going to shade the centers and, and close to the bottom so I don't want to cover I don't want to cover all of the green. I don't want to cover all of the, the leaf green. I just want to do uh, some. So. I'm making the leaves darker at the bottom. And then as I go up to the top, I'm adding water so that it really thins the color out. So I like the leaves to be lighter at the top. So 
See, I'm going to wash that color out and darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. So I'm just kind of using more water at the top of the leaf. If that's too complicated, you can you can just do it the way you want. It's it'll look good either way. If you just want to be creative and shade it differently, that's fine. Um, okay, so let me do. It's going to look good as long as you add water to it. So wherever you put it doesn't really matter, as long as you thin the color out. So you're using very little. Hunter Green. You're using mostly water. Okay, so I'm on step number nine, and I'm going to take the dark aqua and I'm going to shade the sky. So again, we're using mostly water. So when I dip into this dark aqua, I'm going to dip into my water again. And instead of using a lot of aqua, I'm going to use more water. So um, notice that I'm dipping in my water every other time. And what that's doing is that's really thinning my color out. My flowers are still pretty wet, so you want to be careful not to smear those around. And you're not trying to hide the, the base color, you're just adding a little, a little of this darker aqua to it. So, dipping into my water and then See, if it gets like that, and it's kind of a blob, you just add water to it and brush it around. See how that got too dark? So you just take water and drop in the center of it. Okay, that's looking pretty cool, huh? See, this is really dark here, so I can just take a paper towel and kind of touch it. That's helpful. So I'm on step number 10. Uh, I turned the instructions over, so now I'm on the back side. And I think I'm going to turn my board around so I can reach this better. And I'm going to start painting my feathers. Uh, so I'm opening the red, mixing the color if it needs it. If you do have to mix it, make sure you kind of knock some of that color back off of your brush because you don't want too much color on there. So my, uh, my parrot is fairly dry, my plaster. Um, if yours is kind of wet still, you can go ahead and paint on it. You just don't want to press too hard because you don't want the, um, the plaster to mix with your paint. So I'm just going to paint all of this part red and then the bottom part red. Okay, so next I'm going to do yellow. Uh, 
yellow feathers, make sure you wash all the red out of your brush. Step number 11. Okay, I'm going to do the next two areas the same way. This one is the dark aqua and this is periwinkle or uh, royal blue. So I'm going to go ahead and do these next two spots. Okay, so next I'm going to squeeze the glue down to the corner of the bag and then cut it and squirt out a little bit where the marble goes. Just a little dot, you don't need too much. I'm going to drop the marble in place and then I'm going to open the black paint and paint. I'm just going to paint a circle on that eye. It's going to want to move around a little, so just kind of you can either hold it in place and then you can just kind of tap it. I like the pupil to be fairly large, it makes him look a little friendlier. So we're going to let that dry and once it dries maybe do a second coat on it. Okay, that looks pretty cute. Okay, so next I'm opening the neon pink and I'm going to paint the center of each of the red uh, feathers. So we're just going to kind of paint right down the middle of each of those feathers. Okay, now I'm going to use the dark aqua to do this, the royal blue feathers. I'm going to go ahead and glue our Made With Love on there and squirt the glue onto the board first and then take your paintbrush and just spread it around. A little bit too much glue there, so let's add add some around onto the board. Make sure that you put enough glue on that the edges are going to stick down. So make your area of glue larger than this. 